Hello, today we're joined by uh, Stephen Giffens of the SNP. Uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome, thanks for having me along. No problem. Uh, do you think we should start then with why you personally got for the seat? What's driven you personally to stand in the lobby's fight? Yeah, um, well, this is, a, this is going to be a really interesting seat in the election and it's going to be really important to have that strong team of SNP MPs down at Westminster. I'm standing here because, uh, well, I, I, I grew up nearby in, 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 in Perth and um, I've, I've spent uh, a lot of time in this, in this, in this, this constituency, it's a beautiful constituency, um, but it's also a very important one politically. Um, if the SNP is going to have a chance of being um, a bigger group than Liberal Democrats and be able to um, have a stronger voice that will be good for the whole of North East Fife, I don't think that would be good for the rest of Scotland, and it's going to be important that we win the seat. It's a seat that's been held since 1987 by Simon Campbell. Mm -hmm. How do you think he's done over the years? I think he's done a, a reasonably good job as a, as a constituency MP. Um, so, full credit to, to, to him for that, but Ming's now stepping down and I, I, I wish him well in his retirement. Um, but this is a different election and it's, if people want a strong team of SNP MPs and that the SNP, um, whether you agree that or not, always, always does what it says it, it's, 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 it's going to do. Um, and compare that to, if you like, the, the Liberal Democrats record, which has been one of um, breaking their promises. And that's, that's something that's quite fundamental, also something that we're picking up on the doorsteps as well. It's been very hard during the interviews not to mention the SNP. I mean, you must be very pleased with how far it's come along last year, 25,000, this year, over 100,000 yeah. members. Why do you think that is? What's brought about this huge surge of support? It's always nice to be talk talked about. Um, I, th I think there are a number of factors. Um, obviously, there was the energy and enthusiasm of the referendum, and that's obviously been a factor in seeing the, the, the seat grow. That's, that's been the case here in North East Fife, where the, the party has gone from 200 members on referendum day up to over 1,500 members in this constituency. It's a huge increase. Um, those members have brought vim and vigour and new ideas and coupled with, if you like, the wisdom of the, 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 the ones who are older members, and I include myself in that, um, that makes for a very potent force. Um, but beyond the referendum, if you think about this, the SNP has been in government for eight years and it's still reasonably popular. Um, the Tories and, and, and the Liberals have been in power together for five years, so three, three years less, and are struggling. I think that's because the SNP puts forward a positive vision. It says what it's going to do, what, what it says it'll do, it does. And I think that's, that's been quite powerful and it's obviously um, something that's quite attractive for people as well. You mentioned the referendum then. Mm. It was a fairly, I think it's fair to say, definite answer from no. Yeah. But is that over? Because it's not mentioned in the manifesto, but there's a definite sort of subtext, would you say? No, I, th I think, look, um, I think you're reading too much into things. This is a Westminster election, and that's why the SNP is talking about policies that, that will be affected by Westminster. Let's not forget that, that because we voted no, the, the majority of powers and the important powers sit down at Westminster. So it's really important that we set out a suite of policies for Westminster, and we did that in the manifesto. Um, so this is about the Westminster election, it's not about the referendum. It's interesting to compare the two though, because 84% huge turnout. Mm. Last, year, last time with the uh, 2010 election, just 44% of under uh, 18 to 25 year olds yeah. voted. Why, why do you think that is? I, I don't know. I, th I think if we could solve that problem, it would be great. I mean, the best thing, and I'll, I'll say this regardless of whether people voted yes or no in the referendum, the best thing was people turned up and they voted, and that's so important. And I'll say right now, your vote counts. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you, and I'm saying to anybody that watches this, please, please, please use your vote. And obviously, I'd like you to vote SNP. Um, my colleagues who are the other candidates would like you to vote for them as well. But regardless of what you do, vote is really important. Um, and I hope that the energy and enthusiasm we saw for the referendum and that fantastic turnout will have a positive impact on the turnout for this election as well. Okay, so what can an SNP representative in Westminster do for young people, particularly in this area? Okay, well, let's say when, when, when you ask what an SNP MP can do, let me just touch upon that first and let, let, let me talk about um, young people. Firstly, I think it's important um, because if the SNP is down there, you'll probably have minority government, or you'll have, or you will not have the old-fashioned Westminster way of doing things, of one party winning, say, even on a third of the vote, and just bulldozing everything at once through. Parties will have to work with each other. Now, I was um, I was a special advisor in government between 
between the sort of 2007 2011 government and I know firsthand what it's like to have to deal with on a day to day basis with different parties. So I dealt with the Liberals, I dealt with the Labour Party, the Conservatives, and the Green Party on a huge range of issues. And actually, in 2011, with the election, they, they showed that people quite liked the way the SNP conducted government. So I think, first of all, there's a bigger opportunity than ever before to get things through. On issues that are important for young people, I think that education based on the ability to learn or the ability to pay is very important. It's important for young people, but it's also a great investment for the country because it means that people aren't put off going because of the financial implication. I think getting a decent living wage and making work pay is, 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 is very important as well. And if you're talking about the longer term future, um, I think for young people, not spending £100 billion pounds on tried and nuclear weapons when we could be spending that money on public services instead is very important. One of the key uh, important issues that came out of our recent student elections, I mean, it's not something that necessarily is dealt with by the Muslims ago, yeah. but it's uh, local uh, accommodation, yeah. and it's the yeah. lack of affordable accommodation. Yeah. Is there a solution that you could see? Um, I think it's one of these things, I, I think that the affordable housing, I mean, obviously the SNP has um, proposed more house building across the UK, but I mean, it wouldn't be up to me, obviously, how that comes out on a local level. I will say this, I mean, one of the biggest things that I've spoken to students at St Andrews, in fact, after tuition fees, the single biggest issue that the students and, um, have raised with me in St Andrews has been the affordability of living here and accommodation in particular. So I think we need to look at a broad range of measures, but certainly accommodation would be here, it's going to be one of my priorities and I'd, I'd, uh, if, I, if, if I was elected, I think it's the sort of thing that I'd, I'd, I'd be wanting to raise with the Housing Minister as well. Okay, so one thing that I've noticed in a lot of parties, and looking at the SNP um, manifesto, mm -hmm. one of the first phases is we are vote for us, we keep the Tories out. With Tim Brett and Hugh Bell, it's we vote for us, we will keep the SNP out. Yeah. Is this sort of politics, which is sort of playground scrapping, is it really helpful, do you think, or is it um, sort of more distracting? What I'm saying is, is vote SNP and get SNP. Make it dead straightforward. I think the parties need to stand on, I think the SNP has done this, a positive vision of what they stand for. Now, the SNP set out a clear set of priorities in its manifesto, set out the red lines in any negotiation. So I'd ask people to vote for the SNP because they want to support the SNP, not to keep anybody in or out because the SNP is a, a, a positive vote. I mean, I've noticed the Liberals and the Conservatives. Um, who have been, you know, trying to chase after what, what one another's votes, I'll leave them to that. I think it's, um, if you want to vote, if you want to see an SNP MP here, if you want to see a stronger Scotland at Westminster, vote SNP, simple as that. But what's your stance then on uh, the talk of maybe working with the Liberal Democrats or the Greens? That's, that's important, because remember here where you're only voting for one MP. Now, as I said earlier on in, in, in this interview, um, we're very unlikely to see a majority government. And that means we need to work across um, the political spectrum. And the SNP has already set out, you know, we see other like-minded political parties such as the, the Greens and, and, um, and Plaid Cymru and others um, that, that we can work with in the Progressive Alliance. And if, there are, if, if, if the SNP gets elected and there are others with similar progressive ideas from any party, we will listen to listen and to cooperate. I think that's something that people want to see more and more of. They don't just want to see if you're elected, they don't just want you to see knocking lumps out of the other guy. They want you to see actually just getting on with the job. Do you see your campaign as being quite positive on that? It's against austerity, it's about re uh, raising the living wages. Yeah, I do see it as being positive. I mean, the SNP set out a, a set of criteria that we want to campaign on, you know, about seeing a moderate increase in public spending to um, protect um, economic growth and also protect our public services as well. And we've set that out a very positive vision for the way that we want to see Scotland represented at Westminster and actually progressive policies for the whole of the UK, because after all, Westminster Parliament has an impact on the whole of the UK. I think in St Andrews, a recent survey has found that 29% would vote Tory, mm -hmm. it's 24% would vote Labour, 22% mm -hmm. would Green, mm -hmm. and then at the bottom end, 12% SNP. I mean, how do you feel your chances are? Are you confident, or is that a risk of setback? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, that, that, that survey, I'm, I'm, um, I'd, I'd have to look at that survey in, in, in more detail, but obviously, we're fighting hard for every single seat. Tonight, we'll be out chapping doors in St Andrews, just as um, yesterday without chapping doors in Pitt and Weem, I mean, it's, that's a big constituency. So we take absolutely nothing for granted. The recent opinion polls across the board have been very encouraging, but 
you know, I don't want to say the shape is true, isn't it? One poll that counts, that's the one next week. Definitely, definitely. So uh, you mentioned your campaign, I'm just wondering if you could tell us about how you're approaching it and if people yeah. have been inspired. Is there any way they can get involved? If people want to get involved, um, have a look at our, we have a Stephen Gethins Facebook page, we have a North East Fight Facebook page, and we have a website, um, snbnortheastfight.scot. Go in, have a look, please come along and, and, and get involved. We've got a fantastic um, student organisation here, we've had a lot of students already getting involved, so if people want to come along and get involved, please do. Brilliant, well thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.